Quick question, do you have multiple derogatory accounts on your credit report? If the answer is yes, let me show you an easy and effective strategy that's gonna help you remove them derogatory accounts from your credit report so you can see improvement within your credit score. So sit back, relax, grab a pen, get some paper, get something to drink, cause we about to get straight into it. Hold up, before we get into that process, I know what you're probably thinking. What is a derogatory account? Well, do you have a eviction, a repossession, a charge off? Do you have any type of negative account that's holding your credit score back? Now, the next question should be is, how do you check to see if you have a derogatory account? Now, Credit Karma doesn't show all three credit reports. So what you wanna do is get a credit report that show all three. And you can go to Identity IQ, get you a seven day dollar trial to see what's holding your credit score back. And it's gonna look similar to this, okay? And now you can see the different type of derogatory accounts that's on your credit report. Now that you see the different type of accounts, now let me walk you through an effective strategy that's gonna help you remove the derogatory accounts from your credit report so you can see your credit score increase. All right, so let's get into it. What I was talking about, when you go to Identity IQ, here's a summary of what you're gonna see of your actual report, okay? This is important. Now you understand what's going on with your credit report. So you got delinquent accounts and derogatory accounts. Now your derogatory accounts is like what I was talking about before, the different type of negative accounts that's holding your credit score back. Delinquent accounts are considered, are accounts that are past due, and we all know what collections are, of course, public records is your um, bankruptcy and inquiries, we already know what that is, okay? And balances is how much we owe and payments is how much we pay on a monthly basis. So we understand our credit report, but most importantly, what you need to understand is what accounts are holding you back. Understand that, all right? Now, what we're gonna see is all the negative accounts that's holding our credit score back. And typically, all those negative accounts is typically at the bottom. Derogatory, not derogatory, delinquent accounts could be open and closed um, accounts, but it's basically past due accounts. But derogatory accounts, like I said, are the negative accounts. And what you wanna see is all the negative accounts that are typically holding your credit score back. And what you wanna see is, we're not trying to dispute based off of saying it's not ours or saying specific things okay what we're telling the credit bureaus to do is do it to reinvestigate the accounts that's what that's what we're telling them first to do once we tell them once we tell them that then we tell them based off of discrepancies how did you reinvestigate and i'm gonna walk you through the whole the whole entire process let me just scroll all the way down to the bottom and find a negative account for you here's an example an account account status derogatory status right and you can see what i'm talking about you can see this negative account and as you can see there's inconsistent information on transunion experian transunion experian and equifax when it comes to this specific account and you can actually look and see that the date open is inconsistent you can see the last reporting date is inconsistent you can also see the date last active and the date of last payment is also in the, is inconsistent okay and also credit limit is like you can see a lot of stuff high credit limit a lot of inconsistency on this specific account and you can go more in detail but i'm just giving you a clear example of what we're talking about when it comes to this specific account and as you can see this day um june 22 i mean june the 2022 this is inconsistent as well okay and as you can see, like TransUnion is not reported nothing. So there's a lot of information that's inconsistent with the specific account. But before you actually dispute this account, here are some things you wanna do first. And let me basically walk you through the process of what you need to do first. Here's what you wanna do next. You wanna act like you're disputing with Experian, online with Experian, but you're not gonna dispute online when it comes to Experian. But what you're gonna do is um, open up a, you can go up, create a free account with them, but you can go all the way down to the bottom and click on help sender and then act like you're about to dispute online. And then when you get to the personal information tab, like right here, what you're going to do is see all the different addresses that's on your credit report. But most importantly, you get to see, um, you get to see what accounts are attached to that specific address, right? You get to say you never lived there. We're not disputing right now, but what you're going to see is, as you can see right here, is a clear example of Hey, you can't dispute along with this specific address, but you can also see what's actually attached to that specific um, address, right? You see all the different type of accounts that are attached to the address. Just take note to see like all the derogatory accounts that are attached to that spe specific address. And you wanna do 
your best to remove that address. Now, if you don't remove it off your credit report, it's okay. But this is just another way to remove some of your addresses. But most importantly, you want to have everything cleaned up anyways. You want to have one name, one address, one phone number, one job history, all right? You want to look like you're stable when it comes to on your credit report, all right? You don't want to have too many addresses on your report because if a lender or somebody else is looking at it, they're going to be like, oh, man, this person is unstable. They're here, they're there. We don't know where they're at, okay? So just have one address on your credit report if possible. And then you can also dispute online. Hear me out. You can dispute online with some of your addresses, not your account, some of your addresses, but some of them you're not going to be able to dispute. And the ones that you can't dispute, go ahead and um, create a letter. And let me show you how to create a letter. So here's the letter I was talking about. hope you can see. Let me make it bigger. All right. So here's an example of a personal information letter. Now, you can create your own personal information letter, but here's an example. I will have this for you. Um, so you can go ahead and copy this template. Now you can make it, you can make it to your own, but this is just an example of what you want to do. Today's current date, your first name, last name, address, and then to whom it concerned. And you're basically talking about, but you want to list all the previous addresses that you want to get removed. And also all the incorrect names that you want to get removed. Because if you don't know, when you look at your Experian report and other reports, you're going to see different variations of your first name, last name, middle name, different variations of your address, phone number, job history. You're going to see variations of a lot of stuff. So to make this simple, you go ahead and take all that stuff that you saw in Experian and just put it right here. And then you want to create three separate letters, one for TransUnion, one for um, Experian, and one for Equifax, right? Make sure you add two forms of identification and send it out certified. The reason why you want to send it out certified is because... The credit bearers can say that they never received your letter. So this is key. Now, you don't have to wait 30 days for them to update your personal information. It usually takes like seven days. And if you don't see your personal information updated or you don't get no notification, just give them a call. Call Expand, call TransUnion, call Equifax. Make sure they received it. Make sure they updated your personal information. And you can just, if they don't, you can then file a complaint with the CFPB and that can be a, um, another avenue where you can remove some of your personal information, all right? But don't let that stop you from sending out your first letter. And the next letter that you want to send out is what I call the reinvestigation letter, all right? The reinvestigation request letter. This letter is basically asking the credit bureaus to reinvestigate those negative accounts. The goal based off of 15 USC 1681 um, EB. If you don't understand that law, that law basically saying that everything must be complete and accurate on your credit report okay all right they're supposed to make they're supposed to ensure maximum possible accuracy on that specific account so your goal for this is just to tell them to reinvestigate that specific account so what you're going to do is just put your name your address today's date the credit you don't have to put that name but just put the name of the credit bureau that you want to you have to put the address if you don't want to um, but most importantly to whom this concern I just recently looked at my report and I wanted to make sure everything is 100% accurate. All right, um, correct and accurate. Can you reinvestigate the accounts listed below? All right, basically what I said before. Now, the account name and account number. The account name and account number is on your credit report. All those derogatory accounts or any negative account that's hold, any negative account that's holding your credit score back, just list it on this letter. Put the account name and account number and then reinvestigate the completeness of every piece of information. And if it's not accurate, please remove it from my credit report. You're giving them clear instructions on what to do. All right. They can't, they can't say they don't understand this. All right. So you just list all those negative accounts. And also, if you want to, I highly suggest that you get it notarized. The reason why is because when you send the letter out to the credit bureaus, basically what they're saying is you sound like a credit repair company. They are, they are, they are unsure it's actually you, even though they received your driver's license, even though they received that you have proof of residency, they unsure it's you. So what you can do is, um, to ensure that it's you, you can get it notarized. You can go to a bank, you can go to UPS, you can go to different places to get notarized. Now, if you don't have the money, if you don't have the time to get it notarized, just make sure you get it certified and add two forms of identification to this process. So now we got to wait. 
35 days, 30 days for them to do an investigation and five additional days for them to send you back that investigation, okay? Now, usually what happens after you receive your investigation, three things happen. The credit bureaus delete your accounts, the credit bureaus verify your accounts, or the credit bureaus don't respond to you at all. Now, this can be frustrated because you're doing everything that's required, but the credit bureaus are playing crazy. And I can understand, and this is the reason why we created the litigation program, because instead of going back and forth and back and forth with the credit bureaus, what we do now is actually get the violations put everything together and now what we do is submit that to the lawyers now they draft up a lawsuit and now we're suing experience suing transunion suing equifax and these debt collectors and if this sounds like something you want to do you can apply for this program the link is in the description but if this doesn't sound like you i'm basically going to show you what to do next if the credit bureaus verify your accounts or if the credit bureaus don't respond to you at all so let's get into it so here's what you want to do if your accounts come back verified here's what you want to do here's a letter you want to create all right it's the verification letter but basically what this is doing is based off of the law and what you're allowed to do and what you're allowed to get is a description of how they verify those accounts but we already know they're probably not going to send it to you anyways and if they do try to send something it's probably going to be the wrong thing first things first what you want to do is put your name address date credit bureau's name who are you talking to? Which accounts got verified from which credit bureau? Was it Experian? Was it TransUnion? Was it Equifax? All right. Now, if it was Experian, put Experian. If it was TransUnion, put a, um, TransUnion or Equifax, whoever it was. And it's basically what you're saying is, I'm writing to request a detailed description of the investigation process, followed by your agency regarding the disputed accounts on my credit report pursuant to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which is 15 U.S.C. 1681 I-7. And under this section, right, credit reporting agencies are obligated to provide a description of the investigation within 15 days of receiving a consumer's dispute. All right. Can't dispute with the law. All right. So now what you want to do is which accounts got verified. So you want to put the name of the account right here in the account number and it don't have to be their entire account number. It could be part of it, but just have the account number. And then what you're telling them really specific details is provide the description of the procedure of the investigation used to verify this account. And if you can't delete this account immediately, all right? And what you wanna do is list all the accounts that are verified, just list them all, okay? Now, another thing that you wanna do is, of course, get it notarized if you can. If you can't get it notarized, I understand, but most importantly, you wanna get it certified when you send it out. And make sure, make sure you add two forms of identification. I know, it sounds repetitive, but a lot of people, some people forget, some people um, don't know. So make sure you add your driver's license and proof of residency. All right. It could be a bill. It can be some type of thing that has your name and address. All right. Very important. OK, it could be account statement, utility bill, phone bill, something that has your name and address. OK, that's very important. Key documents and then send it certified when you send it certified. When you go to the post office, the post office know what you're talking about. Just say, I want to send it certified. Just got to fill out some documents and then you'll get the tracking number. Okay. And then once you get the tracking number, make sure you, from the time they received it is 15 days. And if they don't respond within 15 days, that's a violation. And let me show you how to file a complaint based off of everything you just did. Okay. So here's what you want to do next. Okay. You want to file a complaint with the CFPB. All right. So if Google CFPB and then click on this one right here, submit a complaint. Now, once you click on submit a complaint, all you want to do is just scroll down and click on start new complaint. Okay. Very important. If you don't have an account, put your first name, last name, email, phone number, create a password, confirm password, and then of course, sign up and verify your email address. Now, once you do that, and if you already have an account, all you have to do is just click already submit a complaint, right? And then go ahead and put your personal information in. Okay. Now you're going to be in your back portal. Once you're in your back portal, it will be at the right top. Just click on start new complaint. And then you're going to be on a screen that looks similar to this. Now, once you're on the screen that looks similar to this, click on credit reporter right here to the left and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on credit reporting again and click on next. Okay. Now, based off of what happened is based off of what you do. All right. So remember I say two things usually happen, the credit bureau or three things, the credit bureaus delete your account, credit bureaus verify your account or the credit bureau that credit bureaus do not respond to you at all, all right? So if they don't respond to you or that they verify your account, you wanna click on problem with the company's investigation into an existing problem. And based off of what happened, I'm gonna show you what to do. So we're gonna talk about if they verify your accounts, the investigation did not fix an error on your, 
on your report or if it takes more than 30 days you'll click on this one and i'm gonna show you on how, i'm gonna show you how to write up both complaints okay have you already tried to fix this problem with this company yes all right did you request information no and then what you want to do is just click on next okay now your complaint is going to be kind of similar based off of what happened so now so now what you want to do is is just put your complaint based off of what happened okay so based off of what you did now remember we're only talking to one specific credit bureau okay it can be either Experian, it could be TransUnion or Equifax based off of what happened. We're going to create three separate complaints. The reason why you want to create three separate complaints because you might have accounts on just Experian that doesn't report on TransUnion and Equifax, or you might have accounts on Equifax that don't report on Experian and TransUnion or vice versa. You understand what I'm saying? Or you might have two out of the three credit bureaus. Okay. And the reason why is because if you complain to all three and you don't have specific accounts, we already know they really don't want to do nothing anyway. So you just giving them a reason not to actually do what they're supposed to do. Okay. So I looked at my report. I looked at my report back on January 1st, or you could put, I looked at my experience report back on January 1st, 2024, and notice some things are incomplete and not accurate. And according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, whenever a consumer report agency prepares a consumer report, it shall follow reasonable procedures to assure maximum possible accuracy other information concerning the individual about whom the report relates. I got that from the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which is 15 USC 1681 EB, right? And these accounts, you're going to put the name of the account and the account number, whatever accounts that were um, that you that you want investigated on that letter that you sent to the credit bureaus. They are not complete and accurate. All right. I sent the letter to them making sure everything is complete and accurate and here's my tracking number they sent me they sent me an investigation back and said everything is complete and accurate but if you check my attachment everything is not complete and accurate so what attachments do you want to add the attachment showing a picture of your credit report showing the inconsistent information on those specific accounts this is how um you can show proof of what you're talking about all right and also the letters that you sent out and and according to this law basically this is what they're supposed to do and according to this law providing a description they were supposed to do this and another law that they were supposed to do as well all right so here are some of the laws that they violated there are multiple laws also that they violated but you just gave them like four or five laws that they violated and what's your fair resolution you want to tell them to delete the accounts um listed below all right that's all you want to do next okay and just put the accounts that you want deleted so whatever accounts that you list right here in this basically in this complaint you just want to put those accounts copy it and then tell them you want these accounts removed as well okay so just do something like that and this row b and that's it. And then here's how you're going to attach your evidence right here. Select the file to upload and just upload the documents and then just click on next. Now, remember on this page, who we're talking to, we're talking to Experian or TransUnion or Equifax, whoever um, that you're complaining against. Just look them up, Experian. And usually it should pop up name. You want to click on all fours, last for your social and date of birth. And then just input that information and just click on um do you want to complain with another company and then you're going to click on no all right so what do you do here's what here's what's next all right you can go next and just follow the instruction verify everything and click on submit but i want to go over the complaint based off of let's just say they didn't um let's just say they didn't respond to you within 30 days all right so what can you do with that now it's going to be the same complaint. All you have to do is go back and click on the specific. Here's what I'm talking about. Click on the specific one that is based off of what happened. Okay. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Continue. And now this is what I'm talking about. Remember right here, investigation took more than 30 days. Have you tried to fix this problem before? Then yes, no, then click on next. All right. And then now what you want to do is the complaint is going to be similar, 
but you're just going to take out one part and just change it. Okay. So I sent the letter asking them to make sure everything's complete and accurate. And here's my tracking number. And basically you're going to put this, they never respond to me within 30 days. Um, So now what you're going to put is just, they never responded back to me within the 35 days. You have the tracking number, you have proof, and you basically, and according to this law, they're supposed to do this. And then we're going to get rid of this as well. All right. And everything else we're going to keep because everything um, relates based off of the law that they violated. Okay. And then what was your fair resolution? The same exact thing. And remember, we're either talking to experience and att attach your evidence, take a picture of your, um, your tracking number. Okay. And then company, who are you talking to experience or TransUnion or Equifax. All right. So click on Equifax information services, name as a period, date of birth, and then input that information. You want to complain with another company and then click on next. All right. Now that you understand the process of what you need to do, you have two options. The first option is, of course, follow the process that I show you. Continue to go back and forth with the credit bureaus until you remove the derogatory accounts from your credit report. The second option is, if you feel like you don't have the time and energy to go back and forth and back and forth, you can actually apply to work with our litigation team where we sue the credit bureaus, sue the debt collectors, so you can remove them accounts from your credit report instead of going back and forth and back and forth. And this sounds like you, go ahead, click the link in the description or click the link in the comments, apply to work with our teams so we can help you remove that debt from your credit report.